All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for taking some time to join us for the town hall today. Uh, we'll hear from uh, Art Center President Lauren Buckman, our Provost Karen Hoffman, and our Chief Financial and Academic Officer Rich Holoshek. Uh, they'll speak uh, for a little while and uh, then we'll open it up to Q&A. There is a raise your hand feature on Zoom. When we open it up to Q&A, we'll ask individuals to raise their hand virtually and we'll take questions on a first come first serve basis. But to get us started, I'd like to hand it over to uh, Art Center President Lauren Buckman. Thank you, Jared. Um, and uh, welcome one and all. I, I, I wish you all good health um, to you and to all, all your loved ones. And my heart goes out to uh, any of you. Uh, I know there are people in our community who have family members who are uh, suffering with COVID-19 and um, again, our hearts go out and wishes for a speedy recovery and all good health. Um, I, I, I come to you at this moment with, um, with really a lot of gratitude um, at a very difficult moment. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to be part of this community. I'm, I'm grateful for the, the incredible nimbleness of the response to this rapidly changing set of circumstances. Um, and the way this community on all levels has rallied to respond in the best interests of the school, of our students, of the education that we're offering. Um, and, I, and I do uh, feel like it's really important to give a special shout out to those on our team and in our community who actually need to be on campus. I'm talking about our custodial staff and our security staff and a number of other people who have needed to be on campus and who are there doing that work um, and uh, taking the risks actually of not being at home and, and, and to offer our gratitude and appreciation to, to them and really to this whole community at, this, at a very, very, very challenging moment. So, some of you may know um, the writer Rebecca Solnit. I think she's maybe one of the more important writers today, um, written a series of books and essays and some extraordinary work. And she wrote a book, interestingly, in 2009 called A Paradise Built in Hell, The Extraordinary Communities That Arise in Disaster. Her, and her interest is exactly that. Her interest is what happens to people, what happens to the human spirit, what happens to communities when they're facing struggle and the particularities of the kind of achievements that happen in moments of struggle, um, the level of kindness that rises to one another um, and the problem solving attitude that, that gathers at a time when necessity strikes and we need to be responsive. And her, her book is, is something I, I would encourage all of you to read. It's an extraordinary piece and, and it's all about the power of community. And as I recalled that book and pulled it off the shelf and read it again, I, 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 I felt like she was talking about Art Center. I was, thought she was talking about what I've witnessed in the last weeks as this Art Center community has rallied and, and achieved so much and shown such kindness and such a, an active problem solving attitude. And so I, 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 I come at this moment to communicate to you on a very personal level that I'm both uh, exhausted and energized. Um, uh, you probably understand why I'm exhausted, but I, maybe it, it's important for me to take a moment as to, as to why I'm energized. I'm energized because I've watched in a, a short week's time uh, an entire college uh, of art and design transformed into a distance model. Um, it's been an amazing thing to watch. It, the creativity, the ingenuity, the innovation, the commitment, the working around the clock has been um, has been amazing, and uh, we will identify people later. But I'm so grateful to all those people who have rallied the way they have, hundreds of people who have rallied the way they have to make all of this possible. I'm energized because, again, to go back to the Solnit principle of seeing the resilience and the collaborative spirit spirit that has that has carried us through this time so far. I'm energized because our systems are working. Our management system is working. Our shared governance system is working. Our collective educational values are informing where, who we are, what we're doing, and how we're taking steps um, in the moment. And I'm energized because this moment to me holds a, a really interesting significance for the essential elements of what an art center education is all about. To witness 
uh, all that we teach all the time sort of coming into real life and manifesting itself within the context of community, uh, a sense of problem solving of the seeming impossible, but that creativity and innovation is brought to bear as we tackle the problems that we're facing now. Uh, 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 a willingness to enter uncertainty and, and, and knowing well as artists and designers have told me in my own research and we discuss all the time that uncertainty is, is really the playground for the creative. It's a, it's a fertile, lively place where we go in and we can engage in all kinds of ways and discover as we go and discover as we make. And some of the faculty and chairs have, have spoken quite eloquently, and this is another, another point that I think is so important to raise about this opportunity for all of us, but particularly for our students to learn in a way that's unique to the moment, but to learn in a way that's, that's conjuring such fundamentals about what we want to educate our students to understand. And it all has to do with responding to the unexpected and how much that will transpire in their careers and in their lives to be innovative in tough times and to face tough questions and to have the courage and the ability to wrestle with those tough questions and to really celebrate that triumph of the creative spirit. That's what our community is doing. And so it's interesting we're, we're being uh, put to the test. Uh, what we talk about all the time in terms of the value of the arts and education, what the creative imagination can contribute and who we are as artists and designers, it's all being called out. And our institution needs to fundamentally model that kind of response, which is so deeply connected to who we are as an institution and what we care about and the quality of the education that we're offering. So let me spend just one moment now on certain specifics and fundamentals um, before I introduce Karen and Rich. First, um, as you know, the 2020 spring term resumed today and classes have resumed and it will be completed. Um, and again, that's the product of an enormous amount of hard work and just goodwill and collaboration. The second is more along the lines of a, a kind of principle that I want everyone to understand that I am uh, discussing in many meetings, but also I'm letting it inform fundamentally what I want to communicate and how I'm going about this. And it's abiding by this interesting uh, balance or combination of both firmness on the one hand, in terms of how we're proceeding and deep flexibility on the other hand. And, and what I mean by that is we, we have a course of action with distance learning. We have a commitment to completing the term we have all kinds of things that are in motion in incredibly important ways, and that will take its course and we will stay with it and we will be firm in that. But simultaneously, I think we need to be incredibly flexible within that structure and incredibly compassionate for individual circumstances. And I'm talking about all kinds of things, not the least of which are units and grades and incompletes and timing and finances, and there will be any number of individual circumstances that need to be accommodated, which we need to think and work in the most sensitive and compassionate. I'm jumping in. Uh, hi, everybody. It's Karen Hoffman, your provost. And um, I, I'm virtually standing in front of my office and um, really share Lauren's sentiments regarding this moment in time, this resiliency, this opportunity for creativity and innovation. Um, I guess the one thing that we're all adjusting to is not seeing each other. Um, you know, the Arts Center family and usually this hallway that we're on on the bridge is just constantly filled with students and staff and faculty. And so that's gonna be an adjustment for all of us. And just know that we are grateful that we've got this technology 
to connect in this really robust way. Um, so I'm Laura, back here. I see yeah. you're back. I, I want you to finish yeah. your thoughts. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I'm not sure where I went. Um, uh, and so with, with our graduating students, I was talking about that. Um, it's how important it is to think about um, how we can help them through, how we, we're, we're, we're desperately trying to figure out ways to give them controlled access to our facilities, um, that there's a kind of priority for allocation of, of equipment and materials to them, uh, thinking about virtual grad shows, uh, virtual grad ceremonies among departments, not as a substitute for any kind of future participation in our, in our grad shows in, in August or December, assuming we have them, but, um, but, uh, but, 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 but as a way to, to accommodate our, our graduating students in any way we possibly can. Um, there's a lot to talk about with respect to financial concerns, and I wanna circle back to that later, but let me um, just again in, uh, now turn the floor to, to Karen and Rich. So Karen, why don't you, um, I guess you started, maybe you can pick up where you were sure. and talk a little bit about your thoughts. Sure. So. Um... What I do want to uh, focus on today during our, our time of being together, and you'll hear, you'll, you will hear from me in a few minutes, is really just what exactly we've been doing, um, who's been involved, what our plan of action is, how we've been pivoting, um, and just a lot of what we're hearing from our uh, alumni and our industry that um, are 100% behind us. Um, students, I've been there, I'm an alum, I know how incredibly difficult it is not to have access to that shop, to those labs. Um, we ask for your patience. We've got some really creative, innovative solutions that are coming your way. The chairs and faculty have worked really hard to pivot, uh, to, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, and just know we, we appreciate your patience as we, we do this. This last week was incredibly important for us um, as a team of leadership, of faculty and staff to get together um, to really map out the plan. And again, I'll go more into that in, in more detail later. So I'll hand it over to you, Rich. Um, thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen, and thank you, Lauren. And I, I wanna echo um, a welcome to all of you who are joining this, this um, virtual meeting today. I hope that, I hope that it finds you um, well, and I hope that you're able to find some uh, some contentment and some some uh, moments of joy in this very difficult time, and um, uh, and I hope that you're all ready to take this journey with us that began this morning at about eight o'clock. Um, I want to correct one little thing, Jared. Uh, my title is the Chief Financial and Administrative Officer, not Academic. Uh, Karen is our Chief Academic Officer. So uh, many of you, if not most of you, probably don't really know uh, who I am or, or, or what it is that I do at Art Center. Um, I'm there on the fourth floor of the 1111 building and I have all of the departments that sort of run the platform for the school. Uh, accounting, security, human resources, IT, um, campus security, um, environmental health and safety, on and on. But I, I wanted to uh, take time today to uh, let you know that all of those functions of the school have continued and are continuing completely uninterrupted. Um, that, that payroll continues uninterrupted, that um, the buildings are, um, are clean, have been cleaned regularly. In fact, greater deep cleaning beginning several weeks ago in the public areas of the building. Security, as Lauren said, and custodial staff are on scene uh, on the campus every day, even though the rest of us are generally not there. Uh, maintaining that environment. Um, I, access to um, your, your student records is, is happening uninterrupted. Um, employees are working from home uninterrupted. All of the business of the school, whether it's for um, the student accounts or um, uh, you know, making, paying all the college's bills, all those things are happening uh, completely uninterrupted. We do have a, a, a director of environmental health and safety and risk management, um, Cynthia Quentin, who's, who's one of our heroes of the past few weeks, in particular the past week. She is keeping in touch with all of the um, public health agencies, the two that are most critical 
for Art Center are the Pasadena Department of Public and Health and the uh, Pasadena Department of Public Health and the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health. And we are um, following all of the recommendations uh, with respect to um, use of the campus, et cetera. By now you would have received, if you haven't already seen it, an email um, uh, uh, which lists the, the ways in which you can get access to the campus over the next uh, week in case you do need to come on campus to retrieve any of your items or anything you may need for your classes. Uh, so look for that email. It came out yesterday. If you haven't already seen it, we do have a way for you to make an appointment to come on campus to do that. And uh, starting next week, we're gonna be able to expand access for our graduating students to be able to complete their projects. And then looking um, beyond that into the summer, we're already working on ways that uh, should it be necessary to, to restrict access that we can expand the use of the campus and the campus facilities for summer term. So I know that this is an incredibly um, trying time, a time of not knowing, especially for the students when uh, uh, those of us faculty and, and uh, administrative staff of the college have been in such close contact with one another around the clock over the past seven to 10 days um, that the students, I'm, as a student, I'm sure you don't, you probably don't feel that same level of connection that, that we do. But now starting today with the resumption of classes, um, it's time for all of us to shine. It's time to move forward and um, complete the classes, uh, earn your grades um, and get the credits and move forward as you, as you um, continue your work towards receiving your degree. And um, we are, uh, those of us in the in the business operate and uh, campus operations area are focused on nothing other than making sure that you can complete your degree and that you can complete this semester. Um, and there's been some, as Karen said, some incredibly innovative ways that that's going to be possible. So um, with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Lauren. Go into a little more detail. Pardon me, you were you were muted at the beginning. I was uh, asking Karen if she wanted to talk a little bit. Um, yeah, I, I will jump in. Um, I on Rich's note, um, I, I wanted to let everybody know, especially the students, just what's been happening behind the scenes uh, the last ten days plus. Uh, all of your chairs, um, our leadership team, uh, the online team. Uh, pertinent staff, we've been constantly on meetings uh, working together to provide creative solutions. So that's really, that's a daily cadence. So literally at 8 a.m. every day, we're, we're connecting with each other and sometimes into the afternoon. Um, I, I do want to take a little bit of time to acknowledge some people that have, and some teams that have really uh, made this really happen and that resilience that we were talking about earlier has really shown through. Um, first and foremost, we're really uh, grateful to have Rose Piccioni, our Associate Provost of Online Education, and her team really just stepping up 24-7, literally uh, working with faculty. Um, I believe the last numbers, we were over 560, 580 faculty that have jumped uh, into dot ed online learning how to use Zoom. Um, and it's, it's pretty amazing to see just how quickly we've been able to scale up uh, with these amazing technologies we have to keep our education going. Um, each one of the chairs and their faculty have worked incredibly hard to identify uh, the needs that students are gonna have. Um, we know we have hardware needs, software needs uh, that we are working um, hard to, to create solutions for. Um, we also uh, have been collaborating with IT and our media services teams um, to really make sure that we have what we need to, to, to move into this remote uh, teaching and digital learning. Um, and uh, on the faculty side, we have Ted Young, Associate Provost uh, for Faculty Affairs and his team really working on with faculty adjust curriculum uh, to look at what the learning outcomes can and should be in the next few weeks ahead. On the student side, our Associate Provost for, for Student Affairs, uh, Ray Corlico, um, and his team have really fielded all of the questions that students are asking. So I just wanna assure students we are listening. 
We are hearing you. We understand the issues that are coming up, not just here in Pasadena, in California, in the US, globally. We understand uh, the concerns that you have and we're addressing them. Um, and uh, special shout out to uh, Katie Perkins and the Study Away team. Uh, we've had students in Berlin, in SEAD, uh, in Europe, um, and we are getting them home. Uh, most of them are home. And we've done um, all the things necessary to make sure that our students are safe uh, it, as we move forward. And a lot of you students are in internship. And so Amanda Webb and her team have also been tracking um, how our students are doing with their internships and the adjustments that are needed to, to make there. So I just wanna uh, share my appreciation for just literally hundreds of people coming together uh, in this moment to make this all work. Um, it's a serious commitment, but that's who we are. That's what Art Center is all about. Um, it is all about this creative and innovative pivot that we're experiencing. Um, as I said, and Lauren made really clear, and I wanna also uh, reiterate, there will be flexibility. There will be um, creative ways to finish this term. And uh, we are really excited what the possibilities are to not only finish the term, but actually reinvent and come up with new ideas. I, I'm getting emails from faculty saying they have ideas for new classes already. So we're really encouraged um, by that. And I mentioned earlier, you know, um, I think probably the biggest frustration is the access. As Rich said, we're working on access and how that might be able to, to happen in the future. We just, it's very uncertain at this moment, but we're doing everything we can to ensure that you're able to finish those courses as you, as you need to. Um, and just know also that uh, I encourage students to really be in touch with their faculty and their chairs. Everyone is here for you. Uh, we want to be in communication. Uh, we all need to be looking out for each other at this moment. And um, communication is key during this time. We have the tools, we just need to, to use it. And that includes Art Center email. I have to make a pitch to always check your email. Um, I know that's not always a habit, but that's something that, that we really uh, encourage students to do. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what we're hearing from industry um, and from our alumni. I, I got to say, they've been incredibly supportive because they too are pivoting. Um, I've gotten messages from uh, all of our friends at places like Nike, at Lyft, at Microsoft, at Google, all cheering us on saying, hey, we need your students to know how to work in this way, to know how to quickly pivot, to look at how we still create with the challenge and, and the restraints that are in front of us. And so it does fit our mission really well, uh, learn to create influence change. It's exactly what we're doing. And I just want you all to know how the alumni are feeling about our moment in time, that they are really behind us um, every step of the way. Many of our faculty are also involved in forums. Uh, if you're not aware with uh, ACAD, our sister schools, the Association of Independent uh, Art and Design Colleges. <laughs> Sorry, that's my dog. <laughs> Naturally, uh, we all have pets. My dog sometimes makes a lot of noise. Um, at any rate, we have um, forums that are ha happening about how to adjust to this remote learning and teaching. And so there's a great sharing going on. Um, we're all kind of overcoming the challenges that, that, uh, that we are experiencing and sharing best practices. And that's something that's really vital for us. There's an incredible Facebook group uh, that I know continues to grow and has just great tips, great resources. So um, just know that we are, we are constantly innovating, like literally minute by minute um, on how to deliver this kind of art center education. And, you know, the big thing is too, is we want all of our students to, to continue because, you know, it, it's a very uncertain future, but we know there is a certainty that this will evolve and that at some point, the industry is going to need you. It's going to need your innovative, creative problem solving. It's going to need your new forms of making, your new idea generation to go out into the world. And that's why we're working so hard and we're so committed uh, to, to this particular pivot at this moment. Um, you know, Art Center, <laughs> our whole foundation is built on inventing something totally radically new. Um, besides just nature of the DNA of, of the institution. Remember, we were the first ones out of the gate on a lot of things, sponsored projects, 
uh, design storms, um, new technologies, uh, emerging technologies and using those technologies. Uh, we've influenced the industry over decades and will continue to do so. Um, so I'm asking that we all continue to stay focused on, on that kind of innovative approach and that we are very fortunate to have that kind of relationship with our alumni and industry that it's not just us pushing, they're, they're pulling us along as well. And they really want us uh, to say, stay strong so we can continue to fuel uh, the next uh, endeavors in art and design in general. So those were some of the things that, that's going on on the education side. There's a lot, a lot more that we didn't quite cover, but I'm happy to talk more later about those things. Thank you. Can you hear me? Is that? Can you hear me now? Yeah, okay, thanks. Thanks for the nods. So I, I just want to spend a couple of minutes on um, talking about some of the financial issues. Um, uh, I'm going to focus on the students now, faculty and staff who are listening. Uh, more will be coming to you communicated in the near future. Um, but I, I want to address the, uh, the kind of uh, the, the elephant in the virtual room here. Uh, regarding uh, tuition and some of the the, the calls for uh, refunds and some of the questions that have come come our way and just to say that um, this is an issue that um, I, I personally take incredibly seriously and that we've given um, a, a lot of thought to and um, again my overarching feeling about this is that um, we need to be absolutely um, uh, uh, sort of firm in the guidelines we set um, but but absolutely not be rigid in how we approach this um, in the face of individual need and circumstances and to be absolutely responsive to individual need and circumstances. So these questions about tuition refund have come up and, and, and I get it. Um, I respect the, 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 the reasons and I, I respect the, the request. Um, and I also agree in certain kind of fundamental ways with the position that uh, um, that, that is behind all of it. And, and I, I actually do believe, and I, I want all the students to understand this, that there does need to be uh, financial accommodation here. And where we can do it, we need to do it. But tuition refund is not the mechanism we can use for this. Um, a, we're completing the semester, but there are so many levels of complexity um, and financial aid issues and all kinds of things that make uh, tuition refund not a possible mechanism, not a possible way to meet the growing needs of our students. So what, what can we do and how am I thinking about uh, uh, financial accommodation? And this is not a complete list, but I do wanna communicate some, some issues that are really pressing now. Uh, first, for those of our students who are in any way uh, suffering food insecurity or housing insecurity, um, as has been the practice over the last little while. Um, we have an emergency response team. We have funding to help people out. Um, they need to reach out to the, the team of, of uh, Aaron, Aaron Bruce and Ray Coralico and Cheryl Gillies to, uh, to, to communicate their needs and we will develop that response. Um, students, it goes beyond that, I think too, for, for our students now. There are many families and many students um, looking at facing a lot of economic hardship as, as a result of the situation and need help. I want Art Center to be there um, to be able to help in all and any possible ways that we can. Um, uh, uh, we built a, thanks to the generosity of a particular trustee, we built a special emergency fund, student emergency fund, uh, about a year ago. Um, I am deeply committed to growing it. Uh, I'm working with Emily Laskin and the development team to grow it. Alumni are coming forward and trustees are coming forward. We are building up that fund for uh, a whole array of economic hardships that our students and their families will face. And we, we will endeavor to be as responsive as we possibly can. Um, equipment and software and access to internet and problems that students have regarding that are students who um, may not have the, the, the means to, or the equipment to be able to do the online fully. We are lending out equipment, we're buying new equipment, we're trying to do whatever we can to transfer all of that, to get that to our students in need. And um, that won't stop, speak up, let's hear your needs. And we will, that's, 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 that's a hugely important piece of all of this. It's, it's, it's one thing to put everything online, it's, but we need to make sure that everyone can be able to uh, access it. 
Um, for those classes that just simply can't be completed online, um, we will create a financial accommodations in future terms for students. They can resume that work in those future terms and, and of course will receive total tuition credit to do so um, for those particular classes or for the remainder of those particular classes. And we will work with our students um, uh, on that. I am also, and I'm working with the trustees on this and with Rich on this, I am um, uh, uh, deeply committed to a, a, a one-time infusion of as much institution, additional institutional scholarship as we can possibly uh, create for future terms. Um, a significant amount that's gonna help students in our summer term and depending on how things unfold if necessary into our fall term as well. Um, and to be able to really create the kind of financial accommodation that's necessary for our students as we move forward. In, in short, I, I, I completely understand um, uh, what the call is and I wanna be responsive to it. Um, uh, I, I like to think that the Art Center response to this is not a kind of slam the table, no, there will be no tuition refunds, but to say, okay, there's a, that's not the mechanism we can use. There's other ways we can go about this. We can be creative, but we ultimately have to be supportive and we have to put the money forth to be supportive and make sure that students have the resources they need to be able to succeed. Um, Rich, do you wanna pick up on any of that or add any nuance to what I just said? Um, I, don't, I don't have any particulars um, to add, Lauren. Thank you. You, co you, you, you covered all the things that are currently under consideration for us. Um, for our students right now. We don't have um, details on everything worked out just yet. There just simply hasn't been enough time to do it. Um, but we are, again, uh, coming at this with, the, with the, um, the, the perspective that we need, that we want, and we need to do whatever we can to assure that you as our students can move through successfully to your degree. Um, that this, this semester, as it has been restarted, um, or resumed today is uh, is going to go to its completion. Um, we should all, we are all those of us who are staff and faculty leaning into that process. I, I hope that you as students are doing that as well. Um, and there will be more forthcoming on what we'll be able to do, what the college will be able to do with respect to enrollment for summer and possibly even into fall. Um, summer registration starts soon. And I encourage you to, to um, uh, go into that process just as, as you would have uh, if we hadn't had this period of suspension of classes. And um, again, on any, if you have a need around uh, access or equipment, please reach out to your, part, your department. Many, many students have already done that. Um, and we're responding to those um, needs as best we can with, with um, the resources that we have. So, so far it's been, uh, it's been fine. We've been able to respond to the to the needs, but uh, do reach out to your de your department if you have any particular needs uh, with get getting access to your classes remotely for the rest of this semester. Um, so uh, with that, I don't have anything specific to to add to what Lauren already said. Karen, do you? Do you, Karen? Have um, I. I don't, I think I said most of what we wanted to um, convey to especially the students and to the faculty. Um, I think the, I, I do want to remind everybody about the communication um, and how vital it is at this time. There's a lot of empathy in this community. There's a lot of listening. There's a lot of care. Um, and don't hesitate to reach out. Um, we've got your faculty, your staff, your chairs are here to help. Um, in any way possible. So please don't hesitate. Okay, uh, Jared, I think we'll send it back to you. Great, so we're gonna open up the Q&A. Um, right now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you can virtually raise your hand. We'll take questions on a first come first serve basis. I uh, will um, click on a function that will allow you to uh, talk. Just make sure that you unmute yourself um, at the same time. Uh, and uh, we'll ask that you identify yourself and then ask your question. First in line is Danielle Ferrer. Danielle, would you um, identify yourself and ask your question? Oh. You might, you might be on mute. Hi, 
Um, it was an accident. I apologize. <laughs> uh, please ignore me. I apologize. I'm so sorry. All right. Uh, so, we'll, 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 thank, we'll, you. thank you, honey. Sure, we'll, we'll hi, hi, Danielle. Hi, Karen. <laughs> All right. Uh, next in line, um, Hannah, uh, you can unmute yourself and uh, ask your question. Identify yourself, please. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, I'm Hannah. A graduate of this term spring 2020 and obviously there's some concern a lot of the graduates have had that I'm happy that you guys listening and um, I do want to ask uh, just a couple things just real quick so I said that there will be no reimbursements but uh, as far as graduates that have for example our portfolio class has been canceled uh, will we be real will we be able to retake following classes that have been canceled or like you said, lack of facilities of finished our projects. Will there be, you know, costs involved with that? Will we have um, kind of like leniency? And as far as graduation goes, uh, is there still plans to try to reschedule it or are we still being combined with the summer term? I only caught about 50% of that myself. Jared, did you catch enough to repeat the question? Yeah, Hannah's um, inquiring about graduation um, and uh, how students can make up some of those portfolio classes. Um, and then if there's been any additional thought to graduation uh, beyond allowing spring graduates to participate in summer or fall. Uh, um, um, I, I'm gonna turn this over to Karen in terms of the classes, but absolutely there will be um, uh, we, we will do whatever we can. Uh, we're, we're working on some uh, interesting potential virtual graduations, um, at least department by department and, and uh, maybe even a virtual grad show and that's linked with industry and a recruiting uh, and, and, and our recruiters. Um, and in fact, you know, again, a bright side of this to, to uh, kind of connect with industry in a way that they're already working. Um, um, and, uh, but there will also be opportunities for participating in the shows. And if we have a, hopefully we will have an August graduation or a December graduation, um, and for students to be able to do that and for us to, uh, lease more space and open up more space and, and, uh, and make sure that there's as much access, um, for all, but, 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 but the, the one of the problems is of course, that not all of our graduating students can, can in fact stick around. And so we want to make sure that they have the, the ones who can't stick around or the ones who need to get it done now have that opportunity somehow to do it virtually. Um, Karen, do you want to talk a little bit about the portfolio classes? Yeah, yeah I want to jump in. Hey, Hannah, um, and all the, all the grads from, from the spring 20 that are out there soon to be grads. Uh, just know that we're going to have a lot more details uh, by the end of this week. Um, last week, we had a tremendous focus just to get to this point. Um, Amanda Webb and her team and, and chairs have been working on a series of um, approaches that um, expand the networking of what we're already currently doing uh, through CPD, the Korean Professional Development Office, um, leveraging some really interesting online, resource online sources that does some really interesting interview techniques, again, mimicking what the industry already does in regards to recruiting and interviewing. And then as Lauren said, we're, ex we're exploring the, the different aspects of a virtual grad show. Um, each department is also uh, coming up with ways to expand their portfolio offerings during this time. And I would say, please talk to your department about portfolio development because one of the things that, that uh, CPD will offer up, and again, there'll be more details coming this week, is online portfolio workshops. So ways that you can continue uh, to, to showcase your work uh, to network with industry um, when you're ready and really have a very vibrant uh, way to connect with the industry that, um, that is there for you uh, and wanting to have these conversations for you. Like Lauren said, for those of you that can and want to stay to show uh, in the summer or in the fall, we're, we're more than happy to make that work. And Hannah, I think you also asked one more thing about um, uh, support for access during the summer if needed. Yes, we're absolutely gonna work with you guys. Uh, to make that work this summer, okay? So don't worry about that. But again, stay tuned. Uh, you'll be hearing a lot more about Grad Show uh, by the end of the week. Thank you, Karen. Uh, I would also just like to add that for uh, for graduating students this semester, we are giving uh, 
priority attention to making sure that you have access this semester for the remainder of this now resumed semester uh, to what is what you need on campus in order to um, to complete your portfolios and complete your work. I don't know the details. I don't I don't know uh, each one of you or even in, in uh, what departments, what numbers of students we have in what departments. But I, I just want to assure you that we're we're making um, great progress on on uh, and we'll be announcing by the end of this week the access that will be available next week for graduating students. It will be largely um, limited to graduating students for the rest of this semester. But if for some reason it, it, it isn't uh, possible this semester, absolutely um, accommodation will be made for you to be able to come back in the, in the summer and complete it with, within um, the uh, public health guidelines for, for access and, and environmental health and safety. Thanks, Rich, for that reminder. I appreciate that. Great. Uh, next, we have uh, Sydney Ree. Sydney, will you identify yourself and ask your question? Hi, I'm Sydney here. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay, awesome. Uh, well, I'm a graduating student, and um, I my main question was really about grad show, like having a virtual grad show and just about communication on that. So I guess we'll just have to wait further on that. But um, Lauren had mentioned like that reimbursement is not sort of a possibility, but I'm just wondering, like my priority is graduating and also hopefully finding a job um, that I'm happy with after graduating. So coming back to campus and potentially using that credit isn't really an option. So my question is about reimbursement again. What, and and can, you, can you say a little bit more about about what what you're looking for in terms of um, like a part like support. A possibility of a refund or um, I don't know another way to get that credit back. Um, a, a re well, I, I'm, again, I'm 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 struggling to understand specifically. But are are you looking for? to come back in a later term and catch up with what you missed this term, is that your point? So I graduate this term and right. I it's not really an option for me to come back to school to try to get back the credit that's lost from this term. Right. And so what we're what we're doing with again, that's why we're so laser focused on the on the on the graduating um, uh, the spring graduates is that we want to, uh, as Rich just said, give you all access and everything that we can do within a controlled and safe way so that you can finish what you need to finish. And uh, we're, you know, we're, we're working on how to do that and how to control that and how to do that in a safe way um, so that actually we can take you to the, the conclusion in the best way possible. Um, uh, that's that there, we're, we're quite aware and sensitive to the special needs of our graduating students. It's, um, it's going to require a, a, a particular kind of attention and, and, and ingenuity, frankly. And so, hey, Sydney, I'm just going to add, please, uh, please converse with um, your chair. And, you know, we're, there's a lot we're going to be looking at again this week ahead uh, for, for each of you grad, graduating students. So, for example, I'm taking a photo class that um, allows me to use a photo stage. Like, will we get communication this week on the possibility of being able to use that again. Right, right. That's exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, and to get some safe and controlled access so that you can, you as a graduating student can go in there and finish the work that, you, that you're doing. That's exactly the hope. Okay. I, I want to emphasize is how important it is for you to communicate what you need to your chair or to your faculty for the classes that you are taking and, right now. And it, and, it, and it really is a carve out. It's a carve out for our graduating students because access to the campus by 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 uh, order really needs to not only from it's not just an art center it's a state order obviously it's 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 problematic but we're we're if we can work out a safe way for you to for the graduating students to access it that's exactly what what we want to achieve okay uh great so um thank you for that next uh is min min um you should be able to unmute yourself and uh ask your question Hello, my name is Ming Williams. I'm graduating transportation, um, well, hopefully this term. Um, I, one of my questions is that 
Will, I mean, okay, well, at least I, I do want to just say that I'm a little um, dissatisfied with the inability to have some sort of refund for this, just because we rely and learn so much from our, you know, in-person group critiques from our classmates, the networking that we get from other students and all that kinds of things. But my question is that how are we planning on charging students going forward after this? Is there going to be a difference in costs going forward? And what uh, are y'all planning on, on doing for our grads? And will th those things be available for future graduating classes going through? Um, Rich, you, Lauren or Rich, do you want to start? Because I'll, I'll address them in, in a bit. Sure, I'll, I'll start. Um, so the, the um, you know, as, as I've said, and Karen has said that all our focus now uh, is on getting graduating students the access they need to complete, uh, to complete their semester and, gr and graduate. Um, any, and then any, uh, there's no talk, no consideration at this point of a different tuition structure going forward uh, for future semesters. Um, what is under consideration is for any students who have classes that uh, this current semester simply could not be completed in a remote or online fashion, giving them some form of, form of financial accommodation to take those classes in a future uh, semester. But uh, for students who are graduating, uh, the focus is on, on doing what is necessary so that you can graduate, you can complete your projects and uh, finish the semester and, re and receive your degree. Karen? Yeah, I wanna, uh, hey man, um, I just, I also wanna just comment from, I think the earlier part of your statement was having that interaction with your peers and with your instructors. That's what this week is all about, just to identify how we can do this in practice because that's really important. I get what you're saying is, the ability to have crits, the ability uh, to um, have that connection, that feedback with your instructor, with your peers, it's studio practice. And um, ironically enough, one of the messages I got was the head of Volvo Interiors um, from Sweden saying just how they're adjusting now to all of their design work um, now that they're all you know, separated, but together. Um, so there's a lot of, um, I, I encourage you to use this week um, with your instructors, with your department, continue to identify what's working, what's not working, and let's let's figure this out. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, next, um, Jorge Castillo, you should be able to ask your question. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Jorge Castillo. I'm a graphic design major, and uh, I'm graduating this term. And um, actually, I have two questions. The first one is. Uh, pretty much building up on C uh, Sydney's question and the person after her about uh, some sort of um, reimbursement or um, I don't know some sort of um, I, I don't I don't know how to say it. I, I guess what I want to say is that uh, yes, I know. Um, thankfully, uh, we're gonna be able to finish the semester uh, via uh, online but we are not using the premises of the school and then we're not taking advantage of those um, in-group critiques and um, all, the, all that good stuff that makes our center our center. And then I get, I guess the discomfort, uh, including myself and a lot of peers that I have talked to is that um, we are not taking full advantage of the school. So it doesn't really make sense uh, paying for the whole tuition. I don't know if I'm making sense. So I know Lauren uh, talked about the inability to make refunds and I totally get it because I know, I mean, I've never seen it, but I, but I assume that the financial process, the financial aid process and all that, it's all this is very complex and it can be just like taken apart and do whatever you can. But um, is there gonna be any sorts of accommodations for the students uh, because as Sydney was talking, um, we are graduating, so we won't be able to take advantage of that credit next term, the credit that Lauren was talking about, or basically we're just gonna 
pay for the full tuition term this term, but we're not taking the advantage of all the things that our center is offering. I don't know if I'm making sense. I am making. No, sense. you're making you're you're making total sense. Um, and I think I think the best answer I can give to you in this context is um, um, I, uh, that I would like to have a conversation with you. I would like us to be involved in the conversation to see what how we can help, um, what would make a difference, how we can smooth uh, ease the transition for you. Um, and I'm 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 wide open. And um, uh, you know, in a time where we can get into a little bit more detail, um, albeit remotely, let let's talk about your need and let's see if we can uh, figure out a, a, a creative solution to, to meeting that need. And I would say the same to uh, Sydney and to, uh, and to um, the other individuals who, at, who from the graduating class who have asked a similar kind of question. So um, let's do that. Okay, let's move forward with that. Great, uh, we have time for I think one more question. Uh, Joseph, you should be per, uh, allowed to talk now. Hello, uh, my name is Joseph. I'm uh, graduating uh, this term as well, and I'm in the fine art department. And a, a very important part of my uh, schooling here is the opportunity that I get to uh, show uh, my work in, in this senior show in the senior projects gallery. And um, that doesn't work very well via a virtual um, experience because I think that there's something to be said for a lot of other uh, people who wouldn't necessarily get the opportunity to see the work to be able to walk by and to and to uh, look at the work. Um, also getting feedback on work uh, in person is is very different. Uh, specifically my work has um, elements that kind of are about the embodiment of uh, the individual within a space which um, which doesn't translate very well um, virtually. Um, and I was wondering if uh, there might be ways that you would fund um, future shows for grad students when the time does come around that we are able to uh, display work again, um, that um, in-person experiences um, that, that because, because I feel uh, a little bit disappointed that you know, I've worked so long to come to this point where I would get this opportunity to display in this space that uh, that now I, I don't get. Um, along with also, I think there's problems because I, you know, not being able to have access to workshops and and these kinds of things as well. So, um, yeah, I, I wanted to express my disappointment in that and wonder what ways uh, you would think about possibly uh, supporting uh, future shows of, of uh, graduating fine artists? Uh, well, let me say first in response that um, I, I share the disappointment and I, I, I'm so sorry that this has developed and that you, at this moment of your, of your process has been uh, interrupted and compromised this way. Um, I, I, for those graduates, however, who are who will be around, who can be here um, in future months as, as this thing all settles. Um, absolutely, let's figure out ways for you to have space and do shows and try to make up what you couldn't, um, you, you can't get done now um, to, to complete the experience. Um, uh, there, there's no question that I wanna do that and there's no question that you will be supported financially and otherwise uh, to do that. Um, the, the, the trickier one comes with students who aren't in town, um, who can't stick around, um, and the extent to which we, can, we, we need to focus our energy and attention uh, immediately to, to help them through and to optimize the experience that they're having right now. So um, the, 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 I, uh, anyway, so, so I, I, I share your, uh, I share your, your disappointment and, and, uh, uh, and and, and commit that we will rally to support you uh, in, when, when things do settle down and we can create the space for it to happen. And, and I could just uh, add a little bit to that. Jo Joseph, I think that was your name. I'm sorry, I didn't write it down. Are you an MFA student or an undergrad? Oh, sorry, let me, um... okay. <laughs> Joseph. Uh... Did you hear my question? Are you an MFA? Yeah, I, I'm an uh, undergrad. Undergrad. Okay. And I mean, not that that's so important one, one or the other, but those, 
two departments, undergrad are, uh, fine art and, and the MFA students, are um, we've given particular uh, consideration to. We've been in communication with um, Laura Cooper and, um, and Bruce as well. And the more information will be coming out later this week once we can finalize the details around access um, to um, your materials, access to your, your studios, and a way in which you can receive, if you haven't already at least received your final cr critique from your um, faculty. But I know that that doesn't answer in, in, in entirety the questions that you've raised. I think that Lauren um, has answered as best he can, but those more immediate needs are something we've given we've been really focused on in, in your department as well as the grad art department. So in, in the coming days, you'll have more information. Uh, great, so we just have a couple of minutes left. I know that there are some people that had questions we were unable to get to. Um, those that have been asking questions um, through our YouTube channel, uh, we've taken note of those. Um, those who have raised your hand virtually here, um, uh, I apologize we couldn't get to them. Do please reach out to your department chair and your faculty uh, and to other administrative offices with any questions you have. Uh, I think as you've heard from Lauren, Karen, and Rich, uh, we are um, going to work through this together. And with that, I just uh, turn it back to Lauren to close us out. Um, uh, only thank you for your, for your participation and uh, Again, I think what I, what I want you to leave this meeting with is that even as we make these decisions for the best, for the whole, um, and that we are trying to move the college forward um, as, as best we can under the circumstances, and, and, and there is so much to be excited about in terms of what we're, what we're able to do here and what we're gonna discover, um, but that we are very cognizant and very focused on individual circumstance and individual need and that's where we want to put our energy and resources, even as we create the larger whole and as we, we help people through. Um, um, and we will be receptive to it and we will listen and you need to, to, to please speak up and work with your faculty and work with your chairs. We're meeting and communicating all the time. And I am really trying to, uh, you know, create the sensibility in the whole community that, um, that, even though we can't do a particular tuition refund, we understand that our financial structure and our financial investment has to be reshaped in order to be responsive to the moment and in order to be responsive to the particular needs of people in this community, most significantly our students for sure, but also with equal uh, pressure, the, uh, all the employees of, of, of Art Center and to pay special attention to uh, to, to, you know, real human need at this, at this very difficult time. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Jared, for organizing it. Thanks, Rich and Karen, for your insight and your th thoughtfulness, um, for your sensitivity, all, all of you. Um, uh, we don't have all the answers at the moment, but we do have operating principles. Um, and I hope that they are principles that you hear that are of uh, support and of kindness and of uh, care and of deep commitment to the values of what this education is all about. Thank you, Lauren. Um, that concludes the town hall. And uh, we wish everybody a continued spring term um, that is fulfilling and rewarding. Uh, the town hall has been recorded. We'll make it available in the coming days. Thank you. <laughs>